Jesus set me free in April 2018 from a 27 year heroin, cocaine, and methadone addiction. Okay, um, 1991, I was 16 years old, and I saw you on the live stream at Newtown. That's where a lot of the mess first started. Uh, my first boyfriend injected me with heroin just up the road from where you were preaching. There used to be a 7 Eleven on King Street. Do you remember it? Oh, <laughs> oh, God. Praise God. Yeah, Hallelujah. and it just went from there, and um, I ended up with a very big heroin habit. Ended up at King's Cross, I saw he's on the live stream there. And um, I spent many years on the cross shooting up heroin, shooting up cocaine. I was prostituting myself to support my drug habits. Um, ended up in women's prison, in and out. Spent the best years of my life, my 20s, my early 30s in prison for drug-related offences. I didn't know Jesus. We had chaplains that used to come into the prison. Uh, the Salvation Army ladies, they'll give us a bag of lollies, they'll tell us Jesus loves us, but not once was I told, you need to repent. You need to believe in Jesus' finished work on the cross. And you need to receive him as your Lord and Saviour, keep his commandments and endure to the end. I was never, ever told that about anyone. Even when I was up the cross in the 80s and in the 90s, we used to have a lot of Christians that used to come through there and sing gospel songs and give out sandwiches and coffees. And they're really awesome, but not one of them ever, not one of them ever told me, you need to repent and get saved. No one ever told me that. So I just want to encourage you all, if you're ever in an area where you see people that are high on drugs, you see any prostitutes, don't walk past them. Walk up to them and share the love of the gospel and tell them that they need to repent and receive Jesus. They need to receive Jesus. He's the only one that can save them and heal them. I went through pharmacotherapy programs, detoxes, rehabs, counselling sessions, NA, AA, you name it, I went there. It never works because it's not designed to work. You cannot fix a spiritual problem in uh, what a man offers. And um, I was also in the homosexual lifestyle. That happened to me through childhood trauma. A demon, the spirit of confusion, will enter a child through molestation and childhood trauma, and it confuses you, and I'm here to witness that. Okay? Amen. Jesus set me free from those ungodly desires. April 2018, I was on 130 milligrams of methadone. I was using around $1,000 worth of heroin a day. I was selling my body. You were at Bankstown the other night. Do you know Canterbury Road? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, you remember there was a lot of prostitution yes. there for years? Yes, I was there every single night selling my body to whoever, to whoever, destroying marriage because I didn't care. I manipulated a lot of people. I stole from people I lied. I did the most wicked things to feed that habit. And I just couldn't take it anymore. April 2018, I was living down the south coast. I fell on my knees. I said, Jesus, I cannot do this anymore. Help me, Jesus. Or like I'm at the end of my road. I can't Hallelujah. get off the program. I can't stop using. I can't stop sleeping around. I have these ungodly desires. There's, Jesus, help me. I said, Jesus, if you take away just a fraction of the withdrawal pain and take away the desire to use it. Jesus, I'll glorify you. I promise I will glorify you. And I don't care how embarrassing it is to tell people I was a prostitute and a junkie and in prison and I did so many th weird things and awful things and I'm also covered in tattoos. But, you know, I don't feel condemned about them anymore because I've repented of them. I've repented of every single one of them on my body. And you know what? Jesus took away the withdrawal. He took away the desire to use it. And he Jesus set me free, and you know what? Doesn't matter what you use, what you take, you just start to form, uh, masturbation, sleeping around, drinking, smoking, vaping, anything. Jesus can set you free. You just yes. pull out your mind. You need to submit to him. Trust him. Yes. And Jesus said, if you love me, keep my commandments and endure to the end. Believe in me. Go out and tell everyone what Jesus has done for you. He loves you. He loves you. And I want to say another, another thing too. 
Jesus is real. I have seen him while I was still using, while I was still in that lifestyle, about four years before he set me free. I had a dream and I cannot explain it. I don't know if I was in the body or out of the body. It was three visions in one. I was like in this room and it was all white and Jesus was standing in front of me. He was wearing a white robe and he was looking at me and I just saw all this emotional pain in his eyes and I just felt so much. I can't describe the emotional pain that I was feeling. I felt like I was going to explode and I was crying and crying. And then he showed me. He showed me his crucifixion. He showed me from his hand to his arm up here. And I saw a hammer with an nail stone. Bang. It was like in slow motion. And I felt bang, 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 being nailed into him here. And then in the third vision, I saw him. I couldn't see anyone or anything around me. It was like, he was just showing me. I was standing in front of him while he was on the cross and he was looking down like that at me with so much sadness in his eyes. And you know what? I didn't know what it meant till years later he revealed it to me because my whole life I went through so much childhood trauma, uh, rejection. My mother wanted to abort me, but hey, by the grace of God, I'm still here. Right. Jesus revealed what that dream was. For so many years I shook my fist at heaven and I said, Jesus, why am I suffering? Why am I in so much pain? Why have I been abused and raped and unloved by my own family? If you love me, prove it. Show me all these Christians are saying, Jesus loves you. Prove it to me, Jesus. And then he gave me that dream. And then I said, say, this is how much I love you. Okay, so we got another story. Amen. And you know, all the good thing is, 